back to my channel. My name is Prachi Sharma and in this session today we are working on the most important PYQs or previous year questions for the chapters as for the chapter acid bases and salts. So other chapters have been already uploaded on the channel. We are working on this chapter and this chapter will also be in two parts. The first part I'll be covering about 17 to 18 questions and in the second part I'll be covering the, the rest 15 to 20 questions. So without wasting any time, let's get started. All right, ICC warriors, I hope the screen is clearly visible to you. Uh, we'll quickly start with the first question. So the first question says the gas produced on reaction of dilute sulfuric acid with metallic with a metallic sulfide. So that is hydrogen sulfide. Next question is correct the statement. Magnesium reacts with nitric acid to liberate hydrogen gas. So the answer is magnesium reacts with very dilute nitric acid because this reaction happens when nitric acid is about 1% concentrated only. So it is like a very dilute 1% acid to liberate hydrogen gas. So the answer is very dilute nitric acid. Third question, give, re, uh, give chemical balanced equations for the following reactions, dilute nitric acid and copper carbonate. So let me quickly write that reaction. So copper carbonate is CuCO3 plus nitric acid is HNO3. This gives you CuNO3 whole twice plus carbon dioxide plus water. Next is zinc sulfide and dilute sulfuric acid. So that will be ZNS zinc sulfide plus sulfuric acid is H2SO4 and that gives you ZNSO4 plus H2S gas. Next is Okay, from the list given below, select the word or words required to correctly complete the blanks 1 to 5 in the following passage. The words from the list are to be used only once. Write the answers as A1, 2, 3 and so on. Do not copy the passage. Students, this is the reason I always say read the entire question. The question paper gives you instructions on how they are expecting you to write the answers. And you have to strictly follow those instructions. They are clearly mentioned. Do not copy the passage. And the words given to you are ammonia, ammonium, carbonate, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, hydronium, hydroxide, precipitate, salt and water. Let's start with the first one. A solution M turns blue litmus red. So it must contain dash ions. Another solution O turns red litmus blue and hence must contain dash ions. So when we talk about something that is turning blue to red, that means we are talking about hydronium ions. And in the next case, when we are saying um, solution O tur turns red litmus blue, in this case we are talking about hydroxide ions. Let's move to the second part. When solution M and O are mixed together, the products will be dash and dash. So what are M and O? M and O are base and acid. So when acid and base combine, you get salt and water. So salt and water. If a piece of magnesium was put into the solution M, dash gas would be evolved. So hydrogen gas will be evolved. Let's move to the next one. Give suitable chemical terms for the following. A salt formed by incomplete neutralization of an acid by a base. So this particular salt is acid salt because acid salt always have one hydrogen left in between. So that is because of incomplete neutralization. Second is a definite number of water molecules bound in some salts. So this is water of crystallization. So this will be known as water of crystallization. Third, the process in which a substance absorbs moisture from the atmospheric air to become moist and ultimately dissolve in the absorbed water. This is being deliquescent. This is being deliquescent. Let's move to the next question. Question number six. Choose the most appropriate answer from the following options. Which one of the following will not produce an acid when made to react with water? The answer is carbon monoxide because that will not create an acid. Carbon dioxide will create carbonic acid. 
uh, you have nitrogen dioxide that will give, give you nitric acid then sulfur trioxide will give you sulfuric acid so your answer is carbon monoxide identify the metallic oxide which is amphoteric in nature what do we mean by amphoteric amphoteric means an oxide which has an ability to perform like an acid when reacting with the base and behave like a base when reacting with an acid bottom line no matter what it reacts with it gives you salt plus water so these type of react uh, compounds which have a tendency to behave like an acid or a base depending on the situation these are known as amphoteric oxide and the most common example for that is your uh, you have calcium oxide barium oxide you that is zinc oxide so your answer is zinc oxide copper of not copper oxide question 7 choose the correct answer from the options given below and the first is hydroxide of this metal is soluble in sodium hydroxide solution so your answer options are magnesium lead silver and copper your answer is lead second is when dilute sulfuric acid reacts with iron sulfide the gas evolved is what that is hydrogen sulfide students hydrogen sulfide when you have any sulfide reacting with acid you get hydrogen sulfide eighth question write balanced chemical equations for each of the following sodium thiosulfate is reacted with dilute hydrochloric acid so these equations are important so make sure that you are doing them properly so sodium thiosulfate so that will be na2s2o3 plus hcl <coughs> plus hcl giving you nacl plus water plus so2 plus sulfur now this sulfur is the reason why this equation is generally asked because if it was reacting with regular sulfates you will only get the uh, product still so2 but since it is thiosulfate you get sulfur a yellow precipitate let's move to b part calcium bicarbonate reacts with dilute sulfur dilute hydrochloric acid so that will be cahco3 whole twice plus hcl this will give you cacl2 plus water plus carbon dioxide Let's move to the next part. Dilute sulfuric acid is poured over sodium sulfide. Okay. Again, when you have sulfide, this means you will get hydrogen sulfide as one of the products or as the gas. So let's look at that. Oh, this is sodium sulfide. Okay. So this is Na two S O three plus H two S O four, and this will give you Na two S O four. Plus H two O plus S O two. This is a different question than I expected. Lead nitrate solution is added to sodium chloride solution. So lead nitrate is what? It is P B N O three whole twice added to sodium chloride. So N A C L, which will give you P B C L two plus N A N O three. Now zinc is heated with sodium hydroxide solution. So that would be Z N plus sodium hydroxide is N A O H. Which will give you Na two ZnO two plus hydrogen gas. Let's quickly move ahead to the next one. Fill in the blanks from the choices given within the brackets. The basicity of acidic acid is what? So when we talk about basicity, we are talking about replaceable hydrogen atoms. So generally, uh, this uh, the formula for this is CHPCOOH. And when students look at that, they generally think that it is. Um, Uh, they generally think that okay, okay. Let me just correct one of the previous questions. I just checked. So this is not sulfide. This is sulfide C. Because when you have sulfide D E, you always get H two S. So let's move ahead to the ninth question. Fill in the blanks from the choices given. So uh, this is C H three C O H. So when we talk or talk about basicity, we talk about the number of hydrogen which are replaceable or uh, displaceable. In this case, only one hydrogen is displaceable, so your basicity is one. CH three stays the same. State the inference drawn from the following observation: CH of liquid R is ten. Um, uh, what kind of substance is R? R is an alkaline substance. The second uh, one is not there. Then eleven. Select From the list given below, A to D, one substance in each case which matches the description given in parts first to fourth. 
Each substance is used only once in the answer. Iron, iron three chloride, uh, chromium sulfate, lead chloride, and sodium chloride. A sul compound which is deliquescent. So iron chloride is deliquescent. So your answer for the first one is A. A compound which is insoluble in cold water but soluble in hot water is uh, lead chloride. That is C. Lead chloride. Next is a compound whose aqueous solution is neutral in nature. So that is sodium sodium chloride. Whose aqueous solution is neutral in nature. That is sodium chloride. So this is D. Now next is the compound which is responsible for the green coloration. When sulfur dioxide is passed through acidified potassium dichromate. This is B. Now for sodium chloride. The basic way to remember this one is that when sodium chloride is formed from a base, base plus acid gives you NaCl. So NaCl is a neutral salt or a normal salt. So when this salt is dissolved in water or forms an aqueous solution, this is uh, an, uh, something that is neutral in nature and won't have anything acidity or basicity. It will be neutral. Let's move to the next question. Question number 12. State your observation for the following. Um, paper soaked in potassium permanganate solution is introduced into a glass jar into a gas jar of sulfur dioxide. So in this case what would happen is it decolorizes the purple color of potassium dichromate. So um, let me write for potassium permanganate not dichromate. So what will that be? It decolorizes purple color of potassium permanganate. Let's move to the next question. Write the equation for the following reaction. Zinc oxide is treated with sodium hydroxide solution. So zinc oxide is ZnO. Uh, sodium hydroxide is NaOH. And this will give you Na2. ZnO2 plus water. That's it. Let's move to the next one. Give the equations for the following conversions. Now this is very important. Students, one important thing for these, this type of equation question is that first thing you need to do is just analyze all the compounds given. If you are moving from uh, zinc sulfate to zinc carbonate, what can you react it with? And when you are moving from zinc carbonate to zinc nitrate, again, what can you react it with? So the first step for this type of question is identify the reactants first. So ZnSO4, what can you react it with so that you get zinc carbonate? So you can react it with sodium carbonate. So let me write that here. So you can react with sodium carbonate. From zinc carbonate now you have to move to zinc nitrate. Whenever you are trying to form and move anything from carbonate to nitrate. Generally it is suggested you react it with nitric acid. So react it with nitric acid here. Now from zinc nitrate you are moving to hydroxide. So ZnNO3 whole twice to hydroxide. In this case you can react it with NaOH. Now from zinc hydroxide you are moving to oxide. So for of that you just need decomposition. So just provide heat. You have a bigger compound. You are trying to reach oxide. Provide heat. Now from ZnO you are supposed to go back to SO4. In this case you can react it with H2SO4. So when you try such a question it's not necessary that you answer all of the parts correctly. That is the reason I always say analyze it. Maybe you do not know what is A, but you do know what is B. So make sure that you write that equation correctly. So first analyze the question, identify, do you know all the compound or all the reactants or you know some part of it. Whatever part you know, just work on that area first. Okay, so let's write all these equations. So the first equation is ZnSO4 plus Na2CO3. So ZnSO4 plus Na2CO3 which will give you ZnCO3 plus Na2SO4. Now next is ZnCO3 plus HNO3. So ZnCO3 plus HNO3. This will give you ZnNO3 whole twice plus water plus carbon dioxide. Now you have this nitrate and you are moving to hydroxide NaOH. So ZnNO3 whole twice <coughs> plus NaOH. This will give you ZnOH whole twice zinc hydroxide plus NaNO3. Now this hydroxide 
So Z N O H whole twice, and you are moving to Z N O. Just provide heat. So you will get Z N O plus water. Now you have this Z N O. Add H two S O four to it, and you will get Z N S O four plus water. Now. Always try these questions in three steps. First step: analyze the question, identify all the reactants that you need to place. Once done with that, move to second step. Try to form your equations. You may be able to form four equations. You may be able to form only two equations, or you may know all the equations. Form your equations correctly. Third step: once you have all the equations in place, now balance the equations. Do not get stuck in one equation, students. Please make sure that you write whatever you know. Then balance all these equations. So this question should be answered in three steps. And at the end, of course, your you have to write what is your A B C D E. So at the end, just mention what you are taking A B C D E. Write the names, not the formula, but the names. Let's move to question number fifteen. Choose the most appropriate answer from the following list of oxides, which fit the description. Each answer may be used only. Once, so you have the list given. The first is a basic oxide. So a basic oxide is your Na two metallic oxide. So you can say Na sorry, yeah Na two O Na two O. The next is an oxide which dissolves in water, forming an acid. So that is SO two because it gives you sulfuric acid. So SO two. Next is an amphoteric oxide. So amphoteric oxide, uh, by now you would have understood. There are two examples. First is zinc oxide. Second is aluminium oxide. So Al two O three. Next is a covalent oxide of a metalloid. So that will be SiO two. So that is it for this question. Let's move to the next one. Solution A is a sodium hydroxide solution. Solution B is a weak acid. Solution C. Is a dilute sulfuric acid, which solution will liberate sulfur dioxide from sodium sulfide. So that will be solution C. Okay. Next is give a white PPT with zinc sulfate solution. That will be A. The third is contains solute molecules and ions. So that will be a weak acid. So B. Let's move ahead to question seventy. State what would you observe when first part is washing soda crystals are exposed to the atmosphere. So what happens in this case is they end up losing the water of crystallization, and it becomes amorphous. That means water of crystallization is lost and becomes more powdery or more amorphous. Second question: the salt ferrous chloride is exposed to atmosphere. In this case, ferrous chloride, ferric chloride will end up absorbing moisture, and using that moisture will turn into liquid, or form a solution. All right, that is it for the for today. So, seventeen questions. All right, students. So, this is it for the first part of the most important questions for acids, bases, and salts. Stay tuned on the channel. More videos are gonna come up. So make sure that you are utilizing your time sufficient, like pretty well. Uh, I'm trying to make sure that the videos are very short and crisp for you, so that you spend less time, but you go through more content in that time duration. Make sure that you let me know if you have any queries or doubts, or if there are areas that you are struggling with. So thank you so much, and we'll catch up in the next session.